Welcome to the Greater Pensacola Chamber Toddcast, sponsored by Moorhead Real Estate Law Group. On the Toddcast, Chamber President Todd Thompson talks to the leaders that are making a difference and driving the conversations that will impact our community. Now here's the Chamber President, Todd Thompson. Welcome back to the Greater Pensacola Chamber Toddcast. I'm Todd Thompson, President and CEO of the Greater Pensacola Chamber of Commerce. Kicking off 2020 with our first podcast of the year with a special guest, uh, Mayor Grover Robinson. Mayor Robinson, welcome to the Toddcast. Todd, happy to be here. It's a beautiful January day looking out there at the sun, the, uh, out there looking at the bay. looks gorgeous. I'm sure we, we might see the American Magic go out there. So yeah. I know they're, they're back getting ready to go. So they got a, they got a, they got a short season here to go before they, they get out into the competitive situation and get prepared for America's Cup next year. Yeah, we're really excited to, to have them here, get to watch them practice and uh we'll be rooting for him well we bought we brought back an ncaa uh uh football championship trophy right. now we want we now we want to bring back at least an america's cup that's what that's the only thing i've told him i've said i know it's going to stay in new york but it, it needs to make a visit to pensacola I mean, that's all we can ask we, we are the city of champions so <laughs> we, you know we got to keep the momentum going um but let's let's jump right in uh you've been mayor a little over a year now i don't know if it f- feels like it's been a year or yeah, if it feels yeah. like it's been 10 years <laughs> I don't, you know i know you have a lot going on but just just talk about that year and talk about some of the staff that you brought in i know you, yeah. you you've, you've ramped that up and, and get with your, the, your team that you have in place now. i do think much of year one was uh was internally focused at it re it readjusting the, the city and in putting some positions we felt that were important uh, to help us get some of the work that we need to get out, uh, we we have uh, we've hired in our area. We've sort of restructured um, all of our departments and put things in there. We we brought in uh, two um, uh, two uh, assistant administrators that uh, that really sort of provided some some um, some good executive uh, bench strength and allowed us to really uh, diversify in, in in people that we had there. And it's been a good experience. We brought. The legal counsel we we brought back in house, uh, really as a function, uh, and we brought that in with Susan. She's done a great job. Uh, like I said, our, our our assistant administrators we we brought in Kareth, um, uh, Fiddler from um, Central Florida, and he's been a great addition. And you know our our whole goal we've now moved Keith up, and you know certainly our goal is to try to develop bench strength that can move up and right. when we need it. So when when our uh, when our uh, city uh, administrator left we were able to take uh keith in the deputy position and move him up um we've moved uh dick in there which has allowed us really to move amy into and change over where we are at the financial she just started that we're excited we think there are a lot of good things going to be happening in our finance area and some of the other stuff that we've got one of one of which by the move to Amy, we're looking to do is dealing with technology, and I think you're going to see some changes uh, within our, our IT system. Um, unfortunately, obviously, at this at the same time we were we, we realized and we were making beginning to make moves on that, we ended up having the cyber attack. But right. uh, you know, there were a lot of great things that we did. There were some things that that showed us we could have done some things better, and and that's going to be part of um, you know living and learning and moving forward in that that direction as well. Uh, so we've done a lot of those things. We've brought on somebody, um, Mike Z, and uh, for our complete streets, um, okay. which has really allowed us to focus. Uh, and I think as we become more of an urban environment and we see these things, um, you, you talk, you know, I talk to my children. My children have no desire necessarily to come back and work in a, uh, in a, in a single family detached subdivision. They all want more of an urban environment right. that they live in. They, they, they have, they, they don't mind walking. They don't mind doing other stuff. And I think for us to be a competitive community, we've got to, we've got to be looking at how we enhance and provide those better amenities. And so we brought Mike in, we're, we're doing that. We've got a number of projects that he's working on right now across the city. So I think we're, we're focused on a lot of those things, how we can be better. And, uh, we're just going to continue to keep working. We've also brought additional bench strength in bringing Matt Coughlin to the airport. Mm. The things that we're doing with Dan Flynn in the airport out there have are amazing uh but you know dan is dan's not going to be there forever it's hard to believe um you know i, I always tease him i said did you did you get hired at the airport when you were 12 years old <laughs> right um but uh he's got a lot of things happening there but you know it was really sort of looking internally how do we bring the right people in how do we develop succession plans and it was a lot focused on internal 
Um, we went through the budget. We made a significant investment back in our people. We put uh, training almost at every level mm. uh, back into our people, and so we're trying to do that. So we've we've got a number of initiatives that are happening, but those are some of the people that we've brought in, some of the things we've been doing. I know I know we can talk about a couple of those things as we we move forward uh, on some of the questions you have here. But you know that's sort of where we've been with the people. I really say this first year was internally focused on us. I think year two. As you look at 2020, we're, we're, we're looking externally. What do we do? Okay. So that brings my next question. What, what, what are your goals for 2020? What are you looking at externally? You know, uh, I think from a number of things, if we, if we start in some, some areas that are uh, in economic development and how we, how we position ourselves to, to be at the cusp of, of what we're doing, uh, I think you're seeing that right now, uh, the expansion we've, we're doing at the airport, the things we're taking on there, the stuff with ST is we're just moving forward. This is going to be a big year and uh, for us getting up uh, hangar number two, which is element one of the current project uh, of three different hangars, which are three different elements. So uh, in, 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 in figuring out that's going to bring on an additional probably 1,300 employees out there. And again, how do we figure out ways to train them? Uh, how do we position? And I think that's the most exciting part. I'm excited about what it means for Pensacola. How do we train uh, and give our people skills right. in this community? Um, but it's not just there. We're, we're certainly looking and focused out everywhere. You know, before we came in, you and I were talking about some of the things that we're doing in our community centers. We're very much focused. We don't control the education system, right. but we can help augment it and supplement it and provide other type of opportunities we've always had a great parks and recreation mm -hmm. uh, we we continue to want to build strong bodies and we'll continue to do that but we're trying to figure out how, ways we can build strong minds we're taking on uh, i think most of our our urban uh, community centers have some form of tutoring services there we want to focus on that our whole goal is how do we how do we expand that? How do we be better about doing that? We're looking at a few things. If we can deal with technology, we've talked to some different groups. We've started an arts program at uh, Woodland Heights okay. and uh, very happy about that. You know, arts are so important. They, 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 they foster creativity and you, mm -hmm. you may never end up being in a band or singing or doing any number of things, painting or whatever, but it, it, it teaches you how to be creative and you can apply that into other skills. Right. And I think that's a, that's a lost skill that is important for, for children as they're developing in, in, in what's happening. And, and again, the other part that was interesting was several of the arts organizations came to us and said, Hey, our audience is dying in a sense. I mean, they're getting older. Uh, so, okay, yeah. so how do we expand um, what we're doing uh, so that people understand, uh, you know, children's chorus, singing, other type of things? They came to us, and so we said, yeah, how do we create some exposure mm -hmm. uh, to younger people and, and participate in it? So we're going to continue to do that um, is what we can do. So there are a number of things that we're doing uh, – we talked about some of the traffic stuff that we're doing in trying to build more walkable communities, right. make things safer. I think what you're going to see happen in the downtown area with the hashtag project um, uh, this year, we're, in February, we're going to sit down and look at, at the CRA. I think there's some things on um, East Garden, um, the the new development that is potentially there with Chad Henderson had, which I think will be a, you know, take a whole another block in that on, on Garden Street going east right. and, and really, um, really putting some uh, significant overhaul in that area and, and changing that 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 block some of the areas in the back, making it more productive, bringing a, a hotel and some parking in there. Uh, you know, these are all good things. So I think there the, the initiatives of the hashtag down here in trying to improve walkability on Main Street, um, Cedar, uh, Jefferson, and Palafox is, is critical as well to helping that movement. So... Uh, there are a number of things, the Bruce Beach, the hopefully the the, the Nerder project we have with a new fishing marina right there at the, uh, that will be kind of a day, just there'll be day spots. They won't be, they won't be places you can keep a boat overnight, right. but you can come in during the day and you can, you can visit downtown via boat and have a place to dock. Uh, I think all these things are going to be stuff that we're trying to create those amenities that make us a great community that people want to live in. Right. And that's, I, I, think uh you know we were talking about it earlier uh you know just how pensacola how far it's come in the past decade i mean and, and i bring friends from out of town who are blown away they're like i had no idea pensacola was like this but we still have a lot that we can do yeah. to, to improve i mean you know we have this beautiful waterfront that we're looking at but 
the the accessibility to be able to, to walk you know go from the bridge all the way over to bruce beach uh that would be huge that that's what we want to do and and i i think it's it's trying to figure out how to make it more of an asset for uh for all of us that live here but also um you know tie into that tourist element which then turns into economic development and how do we get people that say boy the, you know i could do my business here and, right and do that you know um, several initiatives, the things we're doing at the airport, we're expanding um, cities, the the number of locations, and mm-hmm. we're going to continue to do that. And, and uh, you know, my hope is over the next uh, uh, six months to a year, we'll have some additional direct flights uh, that you know we're working right now. Um, there comes a time when we may have to expand the airport. We may have to have a second terminal. We may have to have expanded parking deck, and we're looking at all those things right now. Uh, so we we have several things, you know, all over the drawing board about what we want to do that is going to improve the city and make it better. Yeah, and I think you know, for our listeners and for me, I, hearing that you're you're analyzing all of this and you're planning for this and looking at expansion and not just reacting. You know, same if we get to five years from now, we're like, oh my gosh, well now we need another terminal, and we haven't thought about this. I mean, that, that's really encouraging to me is that you're uh, really looking about- at the big picture and saying, okay, what do we need to do to plan for the next five, ten, fifteen years? That's that's what we're trying to do all over, and and you know, we've we've um, you know some of the things here. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the, the, the stance that the chamber has taken and trying to be active this morning. We talked with you about initiatives going to Tallahassee. I think, I think, uh, as, as we look and we go forward, um, you know, those are going to be critical for us, how we participate. And, and many of those things, we're trying to develop those relationships ourselves. We're working very hard on our relationship with the Department of Transportation. Mm-hmm. District 3, we meet quarterly with them and talk about things we're trying to implement in this uh in this community they've been very open they've worked with us looking at maybe a a diet of uh, palafox from cervantes up to the city limit that we think will revitalize that whole north hill corridor Mm -hmm. um you know there are other projects two wayne um mlk and davis so we get more of a neighborhood feel rather than a cut through feel uh, for those neighborhoods so there there are a number of of initiatives that we're looking at that you know i think i think are things that that will be good uh for this community and will move us to what we want to do long term right Uh, so you mentioned 2020 session is upon us uh what are some of the the priorities you have that uh we can work on in tallahassee you know we we've we have a few things that are 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 dealing with uh, internal operations of the city we've got a couple of those but then we've got other stuff uh, one of which, which, which was interesting today, and Robert talked about, it was also a priority for the county is dealing with the Sadowski funds and making sure that there's affordable housing money there. Um, we're right now in the middle of, of of starting a task force that is looking to be how do we create um, 500 affordable units in the city of Pensacola over the next five years? Um, and some of those will be single family detached. Some of them will be multifamily. Mm-hmm. But it's important that we create that affordable housing and you know that that's a that's a significant uh, challenge that we have, and and you heard it today. Both of us said keeping that money in the Sadowski fund so that we can uh, continue to help individuals with finding housing and finding affordable housing. Um, I think that's critical. Um, you know, some of the other initiatives we 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 did get down to you know individual. Um, you know, street project opportunities, some of them that we have in there. I think the biggest one that, that I think is, is a great thing that could be an amenity, not only from a tourism standpoint, but just from all those that live, is dealing, and then also in all three, in, in Scambia County, Santa Rosa County, and the city of Pensacola, is a multi-use um, uh, path along Scenic Highway that really connects downtown through East Pensacola Heights all the way out to UWF mm-hmm. to potentially all the way out to if you wanted to go all the way out and do the trails in Santa Rosa County. Um, you know, when you look at what the tourism offers, that kind of opportunity, we talked about it. There are places in Central Florida that have great, wonderful, um, uh, you know, uh, these 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 trails all around that allow you to bike and run and, and walk. And, and again, what would be a better place to do it than right there on Scenic Highway? Right. And the reason people don't do it on Scenic Highway, it's a beautiful venue, but it's it's fairly dangerous without <laughs> right. having a separate uh, path that, that, that keeps you safe and, and out of the traffic. And so uh, that, that's that's one of the initiatives that we're putting forward as well. So, you know, there, there are a number of things we just went over. Um, I, I think more than anything else, how do we in Northwest Florida stay competitive? Y- y'all have been 
uh, you know, the whole thing's been water project. You mm-hmm. you had water projects, water quality projects here. We've got a number of water quality projects. But um, it's hard when you're in northwest Florida to compete with the Everglades. I mean, I love the Everglades. I think it's understand the importance, what it means not only to the state of Florida, uh, certainly South Florida, the state of Florida, the nation, and really the world. It's one of those kind of places that is important ecologically. But at the same time, there are great quality water projects in northwest Florida, and we've got to find a way uh, to make sure that, that money is being spent fairly in northwest Florida as well. Um, you know, I, I think uh, the projects that we talked with with uh, Commissioner Bender today, they're going to mm-hmm. come out of the restore. Both the Hollis T. Williams project and the uh, Carpenter's Creek project are projects that I think will both be incredible opportunities to improve our water quality and uh, dealing with stormwater, but also to create amenities that will be good for our people and for our tourism. And, and we were talking about this in our in our meeting as well, as you're seeing you know, communities that do these stormwater projects uh, that are, that help with flooding and, and those sorts of things, but they become community amenities where you can go enjoy a concert or have picnics and, absolutely, and, you know, playgrounds, that sort of thing. Parks and recreation is one of the things we continue to do. I think it's some, we take a lot of pride in the city of Pensacola. I think we have a great parks and recreation department, but we always can be better. We can offer other amenities. Brian Cooper's done a great job. Um, we've obviously tied the skate park. Uh, which is something we don't have an amenity here. And Brian's worked uh, diligently to see how we can incorporate more of that into um, Hollis T. Williams. And so as that, as that builds out, those opportunities will be there and it will provide, uh, it's, it's, it's going to, you know, it's going to be a, a, it's going to effectively help us deal with stormwater. It's going to treat that stormwater. It's going to keep us from flooding downtown and all that. At the same time, you were able to walk it and say, well, it's a great park and not even realize that this all, all this stuff is happening. So that's, that I think is exciting um, as we move forward. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, so, in terms of the business environment, Pensacola, uh, you know, I don't hear many complaints, but you know, there's there's always something that you can improve upon. So, what are the things that, that you're working on? To- we, you know, one of the first things I came in, I did not understand why our inspection system and our our, our total, you know, just dealing with approvals we're not online and while we weren't automated and we've made that, that jump. And I really appreciate Jonathan Bilby um, doing that. He's done a great job at our inspections area right now. If you go over there, if you start a new project, you'll be all online. We are still dealing with some older projects that we're closing out that were the old system. And so we're kind of running two systems together. Of course, we had the cyber attack back in December, which was challenging right as we were starting this online system. But I do think as we go forward, the online system will will definitely help. We we are constantly focused on how we can be um, we can be customer service friendly. Now, again, we have rules and regulations we have to enforce, and we will continue to enforce those. But that doesn't mean we, we, we have to do it in a in, a, in an adversarial way, and we're working to try to find opportunities to work together. But we're going to enforce the rules that we have, and, but we, we certainly believe we can do it in a way that's that, that allows you to know. So people, I, you know, my feeling is developers, business people always want to do the right thing. They just want to understand what the rules are so right. they know what to do. And I think that's what we're trying to clearly communicate to people as we move forward. Um, you know, I think, I think the other part is doing it in a way that is good quality customer service. And we're, 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 I think we're doing that too. We're continuing to change and, and make that happen, but that's everywhere. I mean, that's at the police department, the fire department, everywhere we are, we are a customer service uh, organization and we need to provide good quality customer service to people who use our services. And I, I really think we have some of the best people in this community working for the city of Pensacola. I'm proud every day of the 800 people that work for us. Um, they do a great job, and um, my job is just trying to help support them. And, you know, we talked a little bit about earlier about training. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things we want to continue to do is keep working on training so that, that, that whatever the job is that, that they're doing, they understand what it is, and, and they feel prepared, and they feel that we have made the investment in them. Right. Uh, so, that the, you know, again, I think that when, when we show we care by making the investment, I think they show they care uh, by taking care of customers, and, and I, I think there's a that's a lot of what we've tried to focus on is showing our employees we care about them, and I think that will come out and show in the quality of service that they provide, and, and um, you know I, that that that's what I've been focused on. How do we how do we create that? How do we build a customer for uh, service uh, friendly environment? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that's you know one of the big things that people appreciate is is getting 
whether it, even if it's not the answer you want, you get an answer, you get a response, you get the information that you're looking for, and it's consistent and fair. You know, like you say that you know you have the rules, but they're you know implemented for everyone the same way. So you know, it's like, well, this person got this break, or this person was no, treated that's, differently. No, that, that's that's the idea. It's we, level. <laughs> we do. We uh, you know we were just complaining about that, making sure the state treats us all fairly. So right. we got to make sure we treat everybody here fairly, and I, I think. I think we certainly do that, and, and we're working on, on ways that we can do it and make it easier for you um, to get to that point. And, and we've, we, you know, we always end up with challenges. We try to work through them. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, again, I compliment our people in trying to find ways, solutions that we can we can find ways to keep working. Right, right. So uh, you were a county commissioner for 12 years, and so you were one of five votes in a, you know, in a legislative body now you're an executive now you still work with a, a legislative body with the council but you're now an executive position how's that transition been what is how does it feel you know the differences you know, i think you hit hit the hit it on the the part that's the most different people came to me and they said hey you know how's it working what's better working for the county or the city and i, I told them i said I, you know that's equal. I've enjoyed both of them. They're great people working both of them. And a lot of the same work we do, a lot of the work is similar. The biggest difference for me has been the transition um, going from a legislative branch to an executive branch. And, um, you know, I do think um, when you're in the legislative branch, you're one of you're one of five, you're one of seven. So it's a little bit harder um, to figure out. It takes you a little bit more time and you've you've got to figure out how to work together with people. I I do think that ultimately um, whoever sits in this chair is, is the executive. It is, it is better if you've had that experience because Mm -hmm. it teaches you, okay, how do I work through things? And it, it, it gives you a little bit better experience. So I feel like I'm a better mayor because I was a county commissioner and I had that experience and I worked through it and I understood, you know, how government worked. Uh, so I think that's made me a, 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 a better, better mayor than I was a county commissioner. Um, but I do think um, it, it has been I've enjoyed it more being on the executive side where you, you feel like you have a little bit more control of it. You can kind of influence it easier because you're the only one and you sort of set the policy for what's there. Now there, there are some challenges. I mean, I I love the fact, and and I try to explain this to people. I am the executive, so I'm not, I don't take a single vote. So Mm -hmm. I don't sit on anything. I don't vote on anything. So because I don't vote on anything, I'm not sunshine. I mean, the sunshine only deals with votes that you may take. So I can go talk to whoever I want to talk to. And and that's been, that's been really nice. I've been able to talk with county commissioners, uh, city council people, everything else, and not had to worry about, uh, about who I could or couldn't talk with, because that's not the case when you're on one of those, those legislative bodies. So you know, there are some there are some challenges there, uh, but it's a little bit different. I walk into a council meeting, I don't have a vote. Right. Um, you know, our goal is to meet with those council members beforehand, work with them so that we educate them, and, and hopefully they understand uh, what we're trying to achieve. And so far, you know, knock on wood, we've we've gotten most of the votes. We got the vote for our uh, budget, everything else, and and we tried to work with each one of those council members uh, to make sure they understood before. That's our job. Our job is to work. Uh, to make sure they're educated and understand what's going on. And at the end of the day, are we, uh, do we, we don't always need a hundred percent agreement. And, mm-hmm. and again, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of a four, three, five, two vote or, or whatever we have. Um, we obviously want to get the votes we we need, but at the end of the day, I think it's good. When we have differences of opinion. The hard part is, you know, as long as we have respectful differences, we're going to, it's going to make us better. Uh, some of those four or three votes we've had, um, it, you know, we've been able to talk with some of those other council members, find things out that we could fine tune and, and has allowed us to figure out how to change some of the implementation so that we make it better. Um, that's good. That's having differences of opinion is not a, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing as long as we handle it respectfully. And that's what we've, we've tried to do and, and, and we'll continue to keep working it, but it has made it a little bit different. I don't vote on anything. Now I get, right. I get to, I get to take it to council members and talk with them a little bit beforehand. And sometimes they agree with me. Sometimes they don't, but you know, our feeling has been, we, we just appreciate every one of those council members. Uh, even when they don't vote with us, uh, we look for the next time that we can work with them. And again, we just look to open the communication. So we understand better why uh, something didn't happen and how we can make it better. Mm. Very good. So, uh, so what surprised you most about being mayor? You know, you know, it was one of the things that I think when you talk about it, um, when you're one of 
five, you know, and something goes wrong, um, it's easy because you got at least five. You got four other people up there with you. When, right. <laughs> when something goes wrong and you're the mayor, all of a sudden it's like everybody looks at you and they're like, "Okay, what happened?" Right. You know, and you're like, "You're like it's it's kind of lonely." It's, uh, but you know, it's that if you do it right, that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, you know, you know, success happens and there's a lot of people involved in it. And I think when things go wrong, um, you know, that that's the difficult part. But that's why you're here. I mean, you're there to step in, and and it is. It can be a little bit lonelier spot when something goes wrong right um and uh but i think that's the system that we have and whether you're a governor the president a mayor of a city when you're that executive it just that's the way it works out um it's like it's like being a quarterback you know <laughs> right. it's probably probably when things go good you probably get more credit than you deserve and yeah. when things go wrong you, you probably get more blame but it's just uh you're the, you're the quarterback of the of the community and so it's going to happen that way and um you know, it's just, it's part of it. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that part I probably wasn't as surprised uh, that we prepared for. The other thing is how many people want you to be at something. You know, when oh, was, yeah. I was a county commissioner, I used to think oh, I get invited to things. I mean, this, this scheduling won't be any different. All of a sudden you're mayor and it's <laughs> like everybody will. I mean, we, we talked about that. I, mean, we, I, 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 I y'all are the same way. I see the chamber everywhere. Y'all right. are everywhere. So, uh, I mean, it just, it just, it just all of a sudden you're like, wow, my calendar gets, gets overbooked. I mean, that's why I say Lauren is the most important person at City Hall because you can't get on my calendar unless you go through Lauren. That's the right. way uh, she, she keeps it because otherwise I'll be scheduling on top of each other. I, I was sorry I was not able to make your December event, but I think I had two other, right. uh, other yeah. things going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that has been a little bit of the surprise is just, uh, the timing and the schedule of it just is, uh, it, you know, and it, it doesn't stop on Saturdays and Sundays right. either. Uh, so it's just, it's, uh, you know, that part I didn't perhaps realize as much as when I was a county commissioner. I mean, you get invited to some things when you're a county commissioner. Once you become mayor, it's like everybody wants you to be at every function, which is a good thing to be at. And one of the things I love, and, and don't ever run for this job if you don't like being it. The problem is, <laughs> There's only one of me, right? Uh, and I can't be at every single no, function. Yeah, we got that cloning um, so, thing down yet. So yes, uh, <laughs> unless everybody decides that you know that's what we kept talking about these community calendars where everybody wants to. Just, I can just have my whole day planned out, right? And, uh, right. But it's you know that that's the fun part of it. People ask me all the time. Um, you know, I, said, I tell people, I said the fun part is getting to go to all these functions and see people and and be involved and represent the city. Um, I'm very cognizant of the fact. Again, it's like being the quarterback. You get people recognize you, but if it wasn't for 800 men and women that right now are working diligently to make this community better, I wouldn't be able to sit here in this seat and do this interview. I mean, they're the ones that are out there uh, making sure that, that for the most part we function. You go about your day, you drove on city roads, you visit a city park, you you uh, got a city permit, you did all these things, and you didn't even notice it, what happened. Right. And that's what we do every day. Right. Um, and and it's, it's the part that we uh, – uh, that we do, and I, it, it, it doesn't get lost on me. I, I, I realize how fortunate I am to have 800 great people that I get to represent, and I get to have fun here on and be in the studio. Uh, but they're out there doing a lot of work uh, and making our community safe and more, making it work. Yeah, well, and just following you on social media, I mean, and I, I actually thought about this recently. This like, you really are everywhere. I mean, I, you know, we, like you say, weekends, Saturdays, Sundays. If there's a a game or a uh, grand opening or some sort of ceremony. I mean, you're there. So. Well, it's part of the job and it's a, it's a good part of the job, but it, it is, it was sort of a surprise that I thought I knew scheduling and, until I got to the mayor's office. It was like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. Now I really understand scheduling. And you, uh, it, and you're representing fewer people in a smaller <laughs> geographical area now than you were as a county commissioner. It happens, but of course, everybody wants you to be at their event, whether it's in the county or not. Yeah. Uh, and we, we, you know, every now and then we do have to say to certain things that you know it just it doesn't fit within what we're we're doing. But we try to be at everything, yeah. um, even those things that don't. It's always uh, amazing. I, I got a. Uh, an email from a lady the other day who was upset about something that happened on Nine Mile Road, and, and I and I empathized with her, and I tried to send it, and, and some of the things she talked about that we could do, but I tried to explain to her that I don't control Nine Mile Road. Right. That's not that's outside of my jurisdiction. So, uh, you know, it's amazing all the time people think, um, you know, if you're the mayor, that somehow you're you represent the whole the whole region. I do think that's one of the great things about this job is um, even though we represent a very small portion of it, we're only 20% of the Scambia County population that lives in the city, you really become a de facto voice for 
not only not only Escambia County, but really Northwest Florida. There is no other real executive um, like the mayor's position really in Northwest Florida. And, uh, you know, I've, I've worked, um, developed good relationships. I knew John Daly well, mm-hmm. Tallahassee mayor. We mm-hmm. were commissioners together. I've been meeting, in fact, I'm supposed to go over in January to Mobile uh, back in uh, Mayor Stimson came to Pensacola back in uh, yeah, October. Yeah, I met him back in October. And, he was, and so, I, I, you know, we're trying to do quarterly meet. Um, I meet, you know, quarterly with uh, with uh, Cherry and trying to meet with her um, in Gulf Breeze. And, of course, it's great because Heather works for us. So I, at Milton, we get to share a lot of things together right. um, from that standpoint. But we're trying to do that. And, and you know, I think that, that relationship, the Mobile mayor sort of has that opportunity to speak for South Alabama. We're trying to do the same thing for Northwest Florida and find ways that we can work better as a community. You know, one of the things when he and I sat down, I said, you know, do you realize that um, if we were combined MSA, Mobile, Pensacola, combined MSA, we would be in the top 50 combined MSAs in population. And I don't think Mm -hmm. most people realize, you know, we're so used to we're we're such a small part of Florida. But if we really looked with our neighbors to the west and put ourselves together, uh, we're a fairly formidable market within the United States if we think of ourselves that way and what we can do and, and what's along the Gulf Coast. And even though uh, we've got a number of different states, I, I think from a business standpoint, we need to always be cognizant of how we work with Mobile, mm-hmm. um, develop those relationships and keep working between the two states because we got great opportunity. Right. Um, I, you know, I think I think the, the Gulf Coast is a great place. I think we, we stand at perfect time for Pensacola, perfect time for the Gulf Coast, and we need to be working with all of our Gulf Coast cities, uh, regardless of what state they are in. We need to keep working with them, um, because I think for the Gulf Coast, we get, we have great potential. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and we, as a chamber, we want to be supportive of that and, and do what we can to, to help promote, you know, like you say, not just Pensacola and Escambia County, but the region, you know, east and west. I, and I think that's what we're trying to do as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I think that's all the questions I have. Anything uh, you want to add as we, as we wrap up here? You know, I, 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 you know this has been a, a, a sort of a dream job come true. I think, I, I think when I spoke uh, early on, I think I came to a gopher club or something. I said my, my wife says, you know, my work day, she says, you get to ride with the police, you train with the fire department, right. and you pick up garbage. She said, you are living the five-year-old fantasy, <laughs> uh, the fantasy of every five-year-old right. in this community. Um, so I feel very fortunate to have this job. It, uh, it's a great job. I feel like growing up in this community, uh, participating in this community, knowing this community, having worked here um, uh, commercially in this community, I, I feel like it's put me in the right spot at the right time and i think this is the right time for northwest florida i i I can't think of a better time that pensacola has been better situated to take advantage of things that are out there the only thing for us is is just uh you know not getting in our own way how do we how do we make sure that we do it we do it the right way Mm -hmm. i think we're very focused on that i i think the chamber is very focused on that i think you're very focused on how do we address those decisions that position us uh, to be a better community, and that, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the work that you guys do. You're a vital part of what we do here, um, and I think what we're trying to do in Northwest Florida, we have great potential. We just want to do it the right way. Absolutely. We want to make sure um, that we can continue to grow and welcome as many people as we can to this community, but at the same time not ever lose that small-town mm-hmm. feel uh, that we have that makes us, uh, makes us a wonderful place. We also – we don't want to impact the natural amenities that we have here and the water and the and the and the, the beaches and the things that make Pensacola a great uh, community. And we just want to add to those and figure out ways that we can do that in a responsible way. I think the chamber is doing that. I think the city of Pensacola is doing that. As long as we keep doing that, we have the sky's the limit mm-hmm. for this area, for Northwest Florida and, and the city of Pensacola. Yeah, and we as the chamber want to continue to support you, know, support, you support the county, support the region, do what we can to – to uh, continue that upward trajectory. Well, absolutely. Todd, thank you for no. all the things that you've done here and and uh, and continue to keep doing for us. And, no. and so that's exciting. And I will say, I don't think most people know, um, even though you grew up in Tallahassee, that you and I actually grew up together <laughs> right. uh, and that we played, we played Little League uh, baseball together yep. years ago in Tallahassee. So, uh, you know, again, I've known you for a long time, and, and I've always, uh, you know, you want to do the right thing for this community, and I appreciate that. And, and 
thank you for what you're doing here with the chamber. Well, appreciate it. Thank you for your leadership. Mike, thank you for being here today. And uh, we'll catch you all next time on the Toddcast. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Toddcast. To learn more, check out the Greater Pensacola Chamber's Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at Toddcast P. Cola. That's Toddcast, letter P, colon. We hope you join us again next time on the Toddcast.